This episode was sponsored by NFT Ventures Miami. Join the NFTV mailing list for the sickest drops. Welcome back to the World Crypto Network. I'm Thomas Hunt, and we're talking about NFTs with Max Infeld. How's it going, Max? Oh, man, it's going great. Great to be here, Thomas. Um, yeah, it's been a while. Good, good to see you. So, Max, I think it was about four years ago now, and I contacted you out of the blue to join an online art project. Uh, how did you first hear about Curio Cards? Well, yeah, I remember that, uh, that fine day. Um, <laughs> I remember you contacted me like, do you have any art? I'm like, of course I have some art. Um, and um, yeah, being, a, uh, being an artist, I, I'd made a ton of different um, artistic personalities and aliases. And um, I just couldn't find like one to meet all my uh, complex needs as, a, as an artist. So I, uh, yeah, I, I sent some, uh, some art from an artist that made some type of decentralized artworks to the Cure Card Project. And yeah, the rest is history. So I didn't get Max art. I got Marisol Vengas art. Uh, tell us a little bit more about Marisol Vengas. So, yeah, no worries. So with a lot of the projects that I did back then, they were focused on um, different communities and community engagement. And with that, I made a bunch of um, um, art with the viewers rather than kind of like spoon feeding them with traditional art. You're like, you know, you hang up a piece of art on the wall. It talks one direction at the, at the viewer. And that's something I always had a problem with. So most of my artwork is focused on the kind of like the viewer or the participant and like a co-collaboration. So it's a two directional type of a uh, dialectic, you could say. So um, I had a lot of friends and other patrons come together and like build these Marisol Vangas pieces. And then in turn, we would have shows in different locations. So I had a bunch of shows up where I live in Chico, California. And then also in the Bay Area, different coffee shops and venues. Um, yeah, and just a reason to hang out and like color some artworks in and have a lot of fun there. So um, yeah, that's, you know, that's the art. And uh, yeah, we submitted, I think I submitted a few pieces to the Curo Card Project. And altogether, I'm guessing there was like 500 original pieces. Um, and a lot of those, um, because of the excitement around Curo Cards, I, I had to uh, recently uh, complete... Um, basically like a key set and I issued that on wax and um, I definitely contribute a lot of those back to the QR card community and like trade it up for some of my old ones. And yeah, it's been really, really wild ride the last month with the, with the Curio project. Was there a lot of competition to become an NFT artist in 2017? I, if I'm not mistaken, I think we were the first NFT project. So zero competition. We crushed it. <laughs> We did. We did. And it, it went into the history books and onto the Ethereum blockchain uh, where it kind of just sat there. Uh, as people know, the Curio Card project didn't turn out that well. We were way early to NFTs, at least uh, six months before CryptoKitties and uh, four years before the current run. Uh, but what's happened recently? Had you heard about Curio Cards or had you kind of forgotten? Well, let me, <laughs> I, I uh, actually totally forgot about it. Um... I mean, it, it's come up randomly here and there. I'm like, oh, like, I didn't even know technically there were NFTs. I knew there were tokens. I mean, uh, you know, Tom, Tom and I, we go way back, like pre-Bitcoin days go way back. Um, and I remember, um, you know, Counterparty and Rare Peppies, which I'm a huge fan of. So I, I had an entry point into what was going to happen and where it was going. But I didn't think like it was ever going to resurface. And so in the last month, I start getting these kind of like dox, doxing style messages, like congratulations on your, on the project. I'm like, which project, you know, having like 30 aliases, like, I'm, I don't know what they're talking about. Um, I've done a lot of social engagement, social art. I don't know if they're talking about a project that I did on the street that got picked up by some news source or whatever. And then finding out, um, you know, then people started asking me for cards incessantly. I'm like, what cards? Like, I don't have cards. Um, and then, uh, yeah, then catching up with, uh, with some of the other uh, community members, I found out there was a, a discord. And then when I got into the discord, finally, the Curo card, one of the community Curo card discords, um, I'm like, hey, I'm Marisol. They're like, no, you're not. Like Marisol's already here. And we hooked her, we hooked her up with some cards. Uh, so I'm like, 
you're like you're not max like max is already here and i'm like oh no this is way weird. like one of the weirdest universes that i've jumped into that's for sure <laughs> already had an impersonator ready to go and the project had just been found for like a few weeks and people are already like i know how to make money on this i'll scam them oh Imagine. man so wild <laughs> Then there was all the drama with the community and this rapper and that rapper. Uh, but eventually, Saturday Night Live released their NFT Eminem music video. And the next day, Curio cards were for sale. Uh, so what was it like for you when the project was finally uh, for sale on the open market where people could trade them amongst each other? Oh, man, it was so exciting. Um, you know, I've been following tons of NFT projects, um, you know, from literally from day one and um, just to have something that I made, um, you know, so long ago, um, just to have that on OpenSea was awesome. Yeah, that was a great feeling. And um, just just how the, uh, you know, and also the percentage that the artists are eventually going to get from the, um, you know, there's that passive income thing. That's super exciting. Even if it's like pennies a day or whatever, whatever ends up being, it's just that idea that that's a possibility is so cool. Um, and yeah, just the people that I've met, like I met some incredible people that are curio card holders. I'm like, they had the foresight to buy these like four years ago and to invest in something that was like, so cutting edge, like just, yeah, just warms my heart so much. It's also neat to see the community develop and they made their own tools. Uh, they made different things where you can see uh, how many of the curio cards there are. Uh, there's a new leaderboard feature where you can see how close people are to getting that coveted full set. Uh, there are even at least two full sets running around out there. They took uh, screenshots of it and put it on Twitter. Uh, for me, that was really gratifying because there's no reason to collect a full set. It's just you know, like the, Ed, uh, why do you climb the mountain in the Himalayas? You know, it's Everest is because it's there, right? So you collect a full set because it's there. And two people already took that challenge. And uh, when you calculate it out, given the numbers of the cards, uh, there's only 111 of card 26. So there's only really 111 complete sets possible. And I wonder if eventually all the cards will configure themselves into this complete set configuration, if it's like a nature experiment. And we see- Yeah, that. I, I, I'm, oh man, yeah. And just, um, you know, in the last couple of weeks, I've traded a lot of new NFTs for, uh, you know, the original ones, because I didn't have any original ones. And so part of that, you know, and now that I got a few of my, my own, I'm like, oh man, I have to get the full set now. Like it's part of like, like I never anticipated to be that type of collector that I never thought I could be that person. And I'm like, oh no, no, no. Like I'm going to get a full set now, like for sure. Um, and yeah, I just want to add to that. Um, I, at some point we're going to be able to send these cross chain um, at the conference that I'm at right now, um, we're just wrapping it up. It was a Bitcoin conference in Miami, not the main one, but um, the crypto experience uh, Bitcoin conference. Uh, one of the hackathon contests was making a cross-chain NFT platform. And there was a ton of submissions. And I'm really excited about that, where that's going to go with um, essentially like being able to send these from Ethereum to Wax blockchain, for example, and use them as game pieces inside of a game that like, that gets me so excited because essentially we're saying like, like artist collectibles could also be used as game pieces simultaneously. It doesn't have to be either or, and we're going to see a bunch of third party um, smart contracts leverage these NFTs. A great example of this is our planet on the wax blockchain. Uh, you can stake garbage pail kids. You can stake uh, top shots. You can stake a variety of different tokens there. And that's really cool. So yeah, I think that's a great idea to use the tokens from one game for another game. Everyone's always like, well, what if you had ID software? And well, you could buy the gun in Doom and you could use it in uh, Wolfenstein, right? You could use the same gun in every game. And I'm like, okay, that's kind of cool, but it's very controlled. The same company that's printing the NFTs would be the same one writing the software, which is good for software, uh, but boring for users, right? I want to use the Spider-Man skin in the Halo game, right? I want to mix everything up together. And if I own the Spider-Man skin, why shouldn't I be able to? 
And uh, that's where I think it gets interesting. If you could take like the cards from Aliens Worlds that mine something and you could take them from some other game and you could mine something else. And then maybe that other game gets more popular than the first game and all the cards are staked over there. And it's like a, a hostile takeover of just the assets because the assets are now in that big pool. And that's what I think is neat about it that maybe the the other people haven't figured out yet. Like Tops just I issued all their baseball cards, right? And they're very official and they're very square. They're baseball cards, right? He's catching the ball, he's jumping for it, he's hitting it, right? But if you made these baseball cards into Ninja Turtle Warriors or something of the Galactic Federation, they could each have different powers. And the second basements could run the navigation system. I mean, you can rewrite the rules for all of these things and they don't have to be square baseball cards anymore. Suddenly the second baseman for the Oakland Athletics is coveted because he's the only one that can fly the dreadnought in some crazy game. And he has no idea and Topps has no idea. And yet these are just uh, tokens. They're just uh, strings of numbers and letters that can be transferred to any game or any collection system. So I hope more of that happens soon. Uh, even if the companies that produce their boring baseball cards don't like it. Yeah. And it's, it's there, there's going to be a problem for a lot of companies where they see their NFTs used in these like unexpected destinations, but Hey, like that's the risk they're taking. Um, it's going to be incredible, you know, and I just love that concept of leveraging the network effect of other communities. Um, you know, it's like that concept of airdropping is going to come back again through NFTs. Um, we see that a lot on Wax already. There's an amazing tool called Bounty Block where you can say, pick any category of NFTs or schema or templates, and you can drop your NFT on all of their, on all those users' wallets. You know, it can be like, you know, for one of these NFTs, you can get, you can drop three of them or four of them. And uh, just to see that that's even a possibility is huge. Well, that's, so I hope, that sounds fantastic. Yeah. So could I do a promotion where like I have the Tiger King's Garbage Pail uh, kids cards because you gave me one of them and i was looking through them and i was like that's not an old garbage pail kid card that's you know tiger king i know him he's new and then i looked it up and i figured out there was a whole series and they're making new uh garbage pail art and i was like oh that's so cool and then i found the original set and all those things but if i wanted to target the jump and joe exotic card and give out a mad bitcoins card for every joe exotic card uh could we just do that like program yeah, yeah yeah that's we could do that right now for sure with that with that tool i'm describing on wax um and there's uh there's more of these things coming out you know like all the time so oh man it's so it that's that is just so incredible we've been waiting for mass adoption i think this is it um i used to think it was like oh it's gonna be in payments we're gonna buy a coffee with bitcoin and like we we all know what happened there um but um yeah and there's uh i'm not saying it has to be either or like i think i think uh you know, this type of adoption will lead into the initial adoption we thought was going to happen. Um, but yeah, this is, this to me feels like the closest to average people holding a wallet full of pictures and they can redeem those things for those pictures. And like, that's it. No integer. The average person doesn't have to like, you know, see a bunch of zeros and a number and like figure out what that is in dollars. I'm like, you know, we're just not going to have that. Um, well, um, and Wax, Wax does have an interesting feature that I agree with you could be used to spread uh, cryptocurrency or NFTs or whatever you want to call it. Uh, it's a dangerous feature. I've already lost a card this way, but you can put cards into a link. And as long as you get the link, which might not pop up on mobile, a warning ahead. So don't wrap expensive cards in there, but you can wrap cards into a link and send it to someone and they can open the link and get the cards. And this this idea right here is very simple, I'm sure, but I think it's a really important way to spread NFTs because if somebody doesn't have any, you can give them a bunch of commons from like your your sets or whatever, and they'll just be blown away because they'll be like, oh, look at all this fun, colorful art I are, I've uh, owned now. And, you know, Max, you sent me one of these links not too long ago. And at first I put it to the side and I didn't pay attention. And later on, I come back and I'm like, oh, I should get some more of these dead mouse cards. They're like 50 cents a piece. I've got it. This one says neat. I'm like, all right, neat. I got to get a neat to go with my goat. And I think I bought a deer to go with my pig. And again, I have no knowledge of what these are for. And I'm not even like a big dead mouse DJ fan or something. I'm generally aware of him uh, or her or whoever he is. Um, but uh, it's great. It's fun. Uh, you can buy them. The garbage pail kids are oh. like 40 cents a piece. Like, I, you know, 
I, I don't think they're going to go up. I'm not investing in them. Obviously, my 40 cents is lost forever. Um, but it's fun and it's got that trading card kind of feeling that I yeah. don't get from yeah. any and, other sites. Yeah. And just to add that, that engagement is like what I truly love. And like that's, it comes from a place of love rather than like you're like, trying to sell high to like dump your bags on someone else it's like like it's the total opposite of that type of ecosystem um and and uh your claim links when you generate them on wax you can actually go under the trading menu and then you can re you can uh claw back those links so if you go under trading um on the left of your interface you you know any links that you've generated you can regenerate so um at this conference i gave away 420 uh, free NFTs as scratcher tickets with those claim links encoded in each one. So I reached out to friends and community members within Wax, and uh, they all can, and I put a bunch of Marisol pieces in there too. Um, they uh, essentially scratch off the ticket, scan the QR code. There's a claim link for that piece. They push claim that goes straight into their cloud wallet. So no downloading a special wallet, like it's all in the browser. Super clean. Um, and, uh, at the end of the year, I'm going to do a clawback for all those links. And it says it on the scratcher too. So there's no confusion there. Um, just so that, you know, I can give them away in the next round. Um, and all, and just by doing that, um, I, a very popular, uh, individual at this conference, um, he's like, Hey, I want to do this for a major product. I know I'm speaking really ambiguously about this. I have to right now, but, but essentially that they want to put them into a certain product. Um, so the, the company I consult with, we're going to be definitely going to be issuing these into physical products. You'll open up said product, pull out this, like this, this NFT, you know, it's like, just reminds me of the excitement of like Cracker Jack, uh, boxes and something along those lines, but I'm so excited. Like, I wish I could share. I'm like, oh man, anyway, we'll, we'll have to do another, uh, another show sometime about that. Um. But yeah, so that's, that's to me feels, feels good. It's like back in the day, like, oh, you made it crypto. Let me send you, show you how to get the wallet and show me how to send you some. It's not about like pumping bags or like, you know, rug pulling or any of these like scary things that are out there. This is more like all about making your own store value um, and giving it to your community. Um, and that's as simple as, you know, the simplest, purest form of, uh, of enjoying this and leveraging that technology for sure. Well, I definitely love the idea of being able to get the NFTs back that you're giving out that no one wants. Uh, they used to have that on change tip and we were critical of them all the time with the Bitcoin and the tipping and the spam. Uh, but it was nice that all of your unclaimed tips weren't lost forever or worse donated to the company. So I do hope to get my shovel back from wax because uh, I was practicing sending people shovels, uh, which I thought was fun. Uh, but another thing you mentioned there was about, uh, packs and randomness and how you get these cards a lot of the cards like when you, when i opened the baseball cards uh it was neat they had a little animation that came up and kind of swirled around the screen and got you excited before you open the baseball cards and then the video window went away and it went to a more pedestrian screen where the cards started popping up and you could see their their uh rarity and uh it was pretty neat and this was again on the wax platform uh they used it for tops baseball cards most recently Looks like they've used it for quite a lot of other things, uh, but we were talking about this offline and it sounds like not everyone can use this. What's going on with PAX and uh, yeah, so, PAX blockchain? Yeah, there's a bunch of different PAX technologies um, from different organizations and it's it was extremely rare and special and now it's become a little more accessible so anyone can make their own PAX and then um, you, know, you can put them on a a Squarespace website or shop, you know, Shopify or whatever you want. And then when people purchase it, you could give them a claim link to the pack as simply as that without any integration. Um, so we're getting to that point where we could actually, um, you know, sell them for USD and then people could get the pack, hold on to them, like and speculate that the price would go up. Um, you see even packs being sold on decentralized exchanges too, which is really trippy. So basically the pack is represented as a, fungible token and then when you send the fungible token to a smart contract it kicks you back the nfts so basically it's like you're you're uh, and then in the foreground you see like you know the pack is being torn and open up i loved opening the garbage bill kids ones that like actually you see a tear in the pack and then the packs like shoot up in the air and come down and, or the cards come down and kind of rain on you and then you get to see the value and you just hope you get a legendary or a mythic and um, so there's a bunch of different ones that have been kind of kept 
uh, very special and proprietary. Um, I mean, it's incredible. I can't even imagine how much they spent on developing these. Uh, but there are some tools that are coming out where it'll make it a lot easier if you're an artist and you want to, um, you know, excite your uh, community members with with pack openings. Yeah, because as you were saying earlier with the collector's mentality and how on a curio cards, you'd start out, maybe you'd want a full set. You'd also maybe look at the artist. You'd say, hey, I want to collect a series of cryptographides or I want to collect Marisol Vengas or whatever it is. You collect one of the artists or a couple of them and then you get the full set. But beyond that, there's the thing that Tops is doing with the uh, common, uncommon, the rare cards. And of course, you know, nobody except for, you know, people that are just having fun with it are out there buying common cards, right? Everybody wants those rare cards. They want the golden ticket Weezer card, right? And those are coming in the packs. And again, this is a key collector's dynamic that, of course, when we were making Curio cards and talking about this, we wanted packs in the 1.0, of course, but we were told it was, you know, more advanced technology and we got to walk before we can run and all that kind of thing. But obviously, Wax has been out for a few years. They've got an ICO. They've got some money. And they've got to deal with tops now, Garbage Pail Kids, Street Fighter, baseball cards even. So they clearly have something going with those packs. And uh, like you mentioned, there was a huge secondary market for these baseball card packs where they start out at $5 a piece on the website. Of course, no one could buy them on the website because it was that, of course, that whole ticket thing with Burning Man and all these websites where it's just the scalpers get there first. They have better computers there. They do this all the time. They're ready to go. And all the packs were sold out. I couldn't even get the web page to load. Right. So, so much for the $5 packs and the $100 packs. And then they entered the open market doubling immediately, $10 packs, $200 packs. And then it turns out that's a really good deal because now it's $50 packs and $400 packs or something like that, right? These people are making good money becoming the baseball card store. And this is working at least for the baseball card one. I don't know if it's going to work for Weezer and I don't know what they released yesterday, mutant monster rock star thing, something. It didn't look that good. Uh, but again, they... They airdropped a free video NFT on me. So again, smart marketing, the future, everyone's really working hard at this. Uh, what do you think, Max? Are you excited for more packs? Are you going to get in on the Weezer crowd sale in two days? I've tried to get packs, man. I've jumped in line and like, and I'm trying to get, I'm just excited for it. And I'm looking for more things to give away too. Um, so yeah, just thinking about how, um, yeah, the, the secondary market's really interesting. Um, I definitely, I definitely think that the, the organizations that figure out how to get, allow people to do more kind of like a staggered distribution, there's some interesting tools that they're, they're putting out there where there's like a cool down, you can buy like one every 10 minutes or like five every 10 minutes or something like, I have a feeling like that makes it more equitable and more, um, you know, it, it, you get a wider distribution in that case, but the secondary marks are really cool to see. Um, especially if you're an artist, you know, cause you can get this, you can set the fee when you create the collection. So on atomic assets, you, you say, oh yeah, I want, I want the maximum amount I can collect. I'm going to set it at, I think you can set it at like, um, 11%, um, because there's a 2% goes to the wax token holders and then 2% goes to the atomic marketplace owners. So if you wanted to, you could, you could perpetually collect, 11% anytime something's resold. So if you're giving away your NFTs and people start just listing them, right? As we know what happens with a crypto token, you just get them out there to your network. Um, magical volume is created because of the network effect. Someone sells it for a penny. Someone's like, this is silly. I'll buy it for two pennies. And then now you have a market. So uh, yeah, so I think that there's a couple strategies as uh, NFT creators that, that are possible with these these uh, low barrier of entry platforms such as uh, Wax. And um, and I think Proton, another EOSIO chain, has a really interesting um, NFT platform that is pretty much free to make NFTs and issue them as well. So we'll see more of these that are like hyper accessible. Um, and then like, you know, the ones that le leverage that network effect for the earliest are going to um, are going to benefit the most. So yeah, the, the secondary market sales um, check out, uh, if you check out Alcor.exchange, you can see um, a lot of the wax um, NFT packs for sale on there. And it's weird to see like, wait, NFT packs. And you see like the green and red bars and like, like this is bizarre, man. And it's coming straight from your wallet to your wallet. So, you know, 
no depositing, no withdrawing, none of that like, you know, terrible middleman stuff we uh, were oh so familiar with. So it seems pretty obvious that every artist would want to create their own NFTs, but why would every consumer and every collector want to buy them? I don't know if it's for those people yet. Um, I'm still kind of on the fence about that. I, I know it feels good to make them and it feels good to give them out to friends and family and loved ones and people you meet like a business card, like we we're talking about before. Um, but other than that, um, yeah, I mean, if you have a collector base and you're already engaging with your community, if you already have community engagement, um, just give them some NFTs, but don't have the expectation that they're going to buy them or like, like, don't make them just to sell them. Cause I don't think that's going to happen. How do we get people to step back from this abyss? Obviously people think these are worth millions of dollars and that if they print their own NFTs, they're going to get millions of dollars, but it actually sounds a lot more like we're talking about baseball cards, as I used to reference all the time when I tell people what curio cards were, I'd be, these are blockchain collectibles. These are digital collectibles similar to baseball cards. And I know from my own history, baseball cards in the 80s and 90s were worth about 30 bucks for a full set. And if you go on eBay right now, uh, about 30 bucks for a full set. So there's been no movement. The market has surprisingly stayed steady and even gone down really, because uh, it was more exciting, I think, to get the full set back in the day. Uh, but how do we convince people that it's more like trading cards? It's less like million dollar pieces of well, artwork. I think if you're, if you like to support art and groups with your money, then why not just get like a, a warehouse receipt for your deposit of, uh, or your, your contribution. And I, I see NFTs just as that, like, um, on wax, I find some really cute or funny things. And I'm like, if it's verified, it means it's like definitely theirs and they made it. So there's a lot of stuff that's hidden on there on the blockchain, but, um, and a lot of, and those are interesting too. If you find out they're actually a real person and you know, it's their content, then you can check off the, um, you know, the safety rails mode or the whitelisting mode. And you can see a whole iceberg of NFTs, so to speak. Um, but I think it's, if you want to support these projects, um, you can drop like hundreds of dollars if you just want to support the artist, but don't expect it to be worth anything like, they may never make NFTs again. They're, they may never be integrated into a game. There may never be a third party app that uses or leverages those. Um, but if it does, you made a good investment, <laughs> you know? Um, but yeah, I think that's it. You Especially just, with guys, something like uh, Wax where it's on its own blockchain. Uh, one of the really lucky things that happened to Curio Cards is we were looking at our various options and what we could do with, you know, three guys and one coder. And uh, one of the ideas we kicked around was Curio Ethereum, which is, I think, what the Crypto Kitty guys later did, and kind of what Wax did, making a copy of EOS. And we're like, well, we'll make a copy of Ethereum. Now we control Ethereum. Now we get to print it. We have all the money and all that, but we have all the technical problems of having to keep it up to date and having to mine it and all that. And if we had just mined Curio Ethereum, it would have been on its own chain. It would have been all alone out there in the universe and uh, probably totally forgotten. So there is something nice about being on a main chain like Ethereum. Uh, but again, Wax now has an incentive to keep their chain going so that they can keep their collectibles happy. And presumably, eventually, the community could take that up if the company went out of business or something. But uh, I do think you're right. It's much more like a receipt. It's much more like a very unique digital receipt to an artwork. And some people have said it's like selling prints. And it's a little like selling prints, except that the print you get to put on your wall like a lot of this, the utilitarian value of the artwork is lost. Like, I don't know if it's good to have baseball cards in like boxes and binders and all this stuff, but that's kind of the value of them. And, and that's not really here. They need a little work on that. I have, once you get over like 20 NFTs on wax, at least on the atomic asset site, you can't really view them properly. There's not a gallery and I'm sure there could be, and I, I'm, maybe there is I already. Don't, I just don't know about it, but, um, we need more galleries, need more binders. We need more things that are displaying things. And one of the things I'd always told people with Curio cards is I wanted it to do that thing where uh, half the cards are colored in because you have them, but half the cards are, are black and faded because you don't have them yet, because that makes people desire more cards and to finish their collections. Yeah, absolutely. And I know a lot of people are working on this as we speak. Um, I, um, 
I, I brought a lot of artists into uh, Wax and um, like many, many, I mean, I've probably onboarded like 500 artists or something. And they're like so interested and they want to use it. But a lot of people um, believe that this technology solves their community problems because they don't necessarily have a community. Some of them do. So don't get me wrong. But a lot of them don't. And they think like this magic technology will solve that. And it doesn't. It's like you. It, it's like if you have engagement practices already, and you you know you talk to your audience and you give them rewards already, then it makes sense. You know, if you're like giving badges or you have a membership card, then NFTs are going to feel right at home. But um, so that's one aspect of it. But a lot of the artists are saying that it feels kind of like a basement because you know, like nerds, us nerds, we like the black sleek interface, you know, but it feels like dark web to a lot of these people. And people are used to seeing gallery sites that are white and pristine and like, and so there's a little, there's, there's, there needs to be some skin skinning in the user, uh, user interface problems. But you know, we're still like, I still see this as a, um, these are the pipes being laid down to this giant metropolis that has yet to be built. Maybe the foundation isn't even there yet. You know, maybe we don't even have like, um, you know, on the other side of it, we don't have the, uh, you know, being able to request a buy order, for example, you're like, Oh yeah, like I'll buy any garbage pill kid price card at this price, you know? And like, why can't we do that yet? So there's a bunch of infrastructure stuff that still needs to be built, but um, yeah, it definitely feels kind of dungeony and like sketchy for a lot of people. <laughs> Well, the, the Wax website, I can't believe they're getting away with it because I look at it and I see right away, oh, this is a, a database website. This is like PHP My Admin, right? We are looking at the SQL database. They're using words like schema. That's not a human word. That's a database administrator word. Get that out of there. Like all these different things, like the rarities and the, the way you have to do this. And this is still for baseball cards. They haven't fixed this. You have to go to some strange page with all kinds of weird things and click list or view on market. That's how you get to the market. None of this other stuff matters to me. I'm trying to get to the market. And then all the sorting is strange and it's never to the default that you'd want, which is like cheapest or newest, uh, stuff like that. You have to click it a bunch of times. Uh, but yeah, I can't believe they got away with the database schema because I can just see the engineer in there. He's like, people will figure it out. They'll figure out that tops is the top level and schema and MLK, MLB dash GKP, echo blee. These are the things you got to click to get to your garbage pail kids cards. They'll figure like how much would it take to, you know, rename everything that says GPK dot tops on the website and have it say garbage pail kids for humans, oh, man. You know, humans so website. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, re it's pretty ridiculous. And I, I agree, but it's just so new, you know, like talking about like less than a year old is the site. So I'm not, not even that months old. I can't, I'm losing track of time, man. I can't keep, I can't even keep up. I can't even uh, keep track of what's going on. Um, but there's another site, um, uh, NFT hive. It's another blockchain explorer. And like, there's bulk tools you can like, um, yeah, that one I really love. It's like, it's still dark, feels kind of basementy also, but, um, yeah, I mean, just being able to like share a collection, like look at my NFTs, like I have a bunch of rare peppies and I'm like, like, I can't, I can't even like share, like, I want to share someone like, like, look at all the ones I have and I have to show them my account logged in with my private key. And I'm like, Ooh, do I really want to hand it to them and show them like what I got? You yeah, know? It has um, the prices been... of everything on there and it totals them all up and it shows them that you got a hundred dollars in baseball cards or whatever. And it can be embarrassing and things like that. You wasted that much money on something that's not real. Um, but yeah, there isn't a way, like you're saying, to view your cards without risking your cards to, sh to properly start showing off your collection. Like I got baseball cards now. And there's 26, 28 teams, something like that. There's like four different levels of card. There's all this stuff. I can't view these properly. I don't even know. I had to kind of figure out just by buying them that they're really only doing like five or six players per team. And I'm like, yeah. why am I seeing the same five guys over and over again? And I don't know. Baseball cards didn't believe in the other players. Like we wouldn't buy them. Um, they only did the top ones. I don't know. It's It's not not a good trust in your product, but they thought that we'd buy four different editions and the silver and the gold and the hologram edition. And I'm like, you're kind of juicing me yeah, here. Yeah. Like I'm not, yeah. not too crazy well, about I would, it. And I would recommend um, token head. It's, it's a standalone application for Android and iOS. It's made by the guys at Aloha EOS, a block producer. They make amazing block producer tools for all the EOS IO chains, really solid team. I think they just got a, that product uh, token uh, token head just got um, 
be acquired by some other larger company. I can't remember, but it's token head. It's a standalone application. You don't log into it. So it doesn't break the terms of like Apple um, or Google play or whatever uh, crypto terms they have. You're literally just putting in your, your wax account or someone else's wax account and it'll show you their NFTs and their value by collection. Real, It's the cleanest, easiest way. Um, and it does calculate the value too. So it shows you the value of all your NFTs. Um, and that's the most, um, that's as far as we got, I feel like, for uh, displaying these things properly. Um, and it's kind of, uh, you know, we, we encounter the same, uh, the pricing errors as we do on Ethereum. You know, it's based upon previous sales and who knows if those are authentic or not. So it's just fun to see like this insanely inflated number for your NFTs. <laughs> but, um, but you can you can kind of tell from that app, it shows you like every day what they're selling for. And you can kind of get an idea if it's, if it's a wash traded or not, because you can see like little dots on each day. And like, uh, but yeah, I, I think we're getting there. It's going to be, uh, you know, it's going to happen soon. Well, and what about the media? They won't stop writing articles about NFTs. They've already turned everybody on to this, um, but they don't seem to be creating much on the buy side. I think they're creating a lot of pressure on the sell side where they're just like, so-and-so has entered, so-and-so has entered, and they sold out, and they sold out, and they sold out. You think it's just going to go on forever? I mean, obviously, I think there's a second half to this where it starts to be stories like, I mortgaged my house to buy NFTs, and they went to zero. And uh, because there's on the, the, they love to build you up in the media, like a presidential campaign or an actor or anything like that. And then they're like the second half, they're like, he wasn't so good. He wasn't so nice. Look at all the bad things that NFT did. So when do you think that's going to happen? Three months, six months? Oh man, I don't know. The the media is, their coverage of what these things are and what they can do is like so terrible like they're just covering like the high ticket ones and it's like like oh man they should be ashamed if you're with the mass media and you're watching this you should be ashamed for your coverage of this stuff like digging deeper what smaller communities are doing how they're actually used look into nft usage on wax and then like check out alien worlds our planet um like revise your articles that you've already written that's I'm, I'm talking talking to all of you media people who wrote these these articles about these like million dollar sales like you guys should be ashamed and i i especially feel it as a person coming from the curio card project here which i think is important should be written about uh, but there seems to be kind of a block where it's like you have to sell for a million dollars so that we can write about you selling for a million dollars but you have to sell for a million dollars first and i've got these nfts here the curio cards they're old, they're historic, they're mentioned in the scientific historic record, which matters to me a lot more than anything else. The 721 spec mentions curio cards and rare pepes. And I think both of them need to be in the Wikipedia entry on NFTs. It's a crime that they're not in there. And people need to be writing about curio cards and rare pepes for what they did to create the art movement that everyone's talking about. Uh, and the article should read something like, without these guys, there'd be no people. And his $69 million sale, because then they could tie it back into money, which is all they want to talk about anyway. Uh, but it does seem to me, and I don't want to do this because I, I like the trading cards and I like the idea and I've been with this idea for a long time, but it just seems like a fad. It seems like a fad that's going to hit a wall pretty soon and the sudden manic buying that's causing the million dollars will back away and the crazy number of people listing their NFTs will keep going up because clearly... Everyone can make these. There's never going to be anybody stopping them from making these, which is what Andrea said all those years ago about Joey coin. He's like, yeah, every kid on the playground will have Joey coin and Joey coin will trade slightly higher than Freddie coin because Joey's more popular than Freddie. And, uh, you know, none of these coins have any real value. Nobody's out there saying Joey coin is the next Bitcoin, which is what they do for everything else. Um, but I think we're there. I don't think anybody's going to say garbage pail kids are the next Ethereum or garbage fail kids are the next Bitcoin. I think everyone pretty much understands they're collectibles, um, but I don't know there's this separation between the million dollars and the 50 cents, so. Oh man, yeah, you brought up a good point. Um, yeah, I mean, and I, I, I really think ultimately these coins will be, I mean, NFTs, these, these NFTs will be used in, um, you know, within these specific communities and games, and it's gonna be a blur of what a game and work is really soon, and. 
Um, you might just be earning NFTs, and, you know, but it's, it's, it's not going to be, we're not going to see them relative to a US dollar price. Like, it's just not going to happen. It's going to be a, like, that'll fade away and they'll be like, you know, you'll, you'll see your, uh, your wallet full of NFTs, but it's not going to be necessarily uh, in a dollar amount because you're like, you'll know that you'll, you'll be able to meet your needs with these things. And I think that's where the mass adoption is. Um, yeah, I think, I think it's cool, you know, to get people to know about this, they, that might be an entry point, you know, like when we, you know, same with the dollar amount of Bitcoin, like when it gets so, up to uh, $50,000, that magical number, then it's like, then all the news companies talk about it. And then when it goes down to 40,000, they all talk about it. So that is the entry point. I, I, I think that probably is the number one way people learn about this stuff is from those dollar amounts. But it's like, it's the super, superficial coverage is, is, has to change. Like they got to say, may, at least make a side note. And then, you know, like, over here, like people are using them as memberships for the organization and providing exponential value. They can drop, you know, they're also getting all these perks and all these benefits. And um, these are traded within the community for, uh, you know, they use them for uh, governance. And you're like, well, what's governance? You know, like, why would we, why would, don't we have governance? It's like, you know, so I think it's, it's a gateway. The price is a gateway drug to discovering more of this ecosystem. But God, it's frustrating. I tell you. Well, maybe on the next version of Wax, they'll change it from showing me the price all the time and instead tell me how close I am to completing the collection. You have seven of 12 Garbage Pail Kids. You have five of 20 Prism Garbage Pail Kids. I mean, give me the info here and convince me to buy more, right? Motivate my sales. Yeah, and I think I think we're going to have to rely upon a lot of those third-party apps like ourplanet.io. Um, yeah, staking all, the, all these, like, I think there's probably like, three dozen or two dozen, I don't even know, dozens of, of cards you can stake, of NFTs you can stake, and then in return, you're mining their token. And then you can earn other things on top of that. Um, just just seeing that, um, we talked about it for years, then we're like, oh man, these guys actually did it. Um, and it's, yeah, it's one of the top blockchain dApps. It's going up the rankings. It'll be up there next to Alien Worlds in a, in a couple of weeks, I would assume. But um, yeah, definitely another one worth following if you're like, well, how are these things used? And it's like, well, we're just trying to figure that out. You know, it's like, it's, they, it doesn't have to be, um, you know, there doesn't have to be a use case. They can just be collectibles. And then someone else might create utility. And that's totally acceptable as well. I agree. Collectibles is enough. Uh, not for most people, though. Most people have this secret thing where they're like, I'm buying it because it's a collectible, but I secretly wish that it's going to go up a 10,000 times and I'm going to make my nut on baseball cards. So uh, I would get rid of that one and I would go back towards like with the garbage pails where I'm happy with 40 cents. I don't have to sell them. I don't have to you know make money on them in the future. I have my little collection. I think they're cute. I spent probably 20 bucks on them or whatever. I can, I can deal with that. Uh, baseball cards, I don't know. Some of those are going to resell. I'm not, I'm not taking a bath on those, but uh, it's been a fun market. And it's been fun to try them out uh, with the top. So uh, Max, what are you working on now? Where can people check out your work? Yeah, so I, uh, I do lots of consulting. I focus on um, uh, CSX.io. It's a block producer for a bunch of EOS IO chains. Um, and we're, uh, yeah, we're getting our infrastructure set back up to offer uh, great services and running nodes that uh, support these networks. We're a huge EOS IO uh, proponent. Uh, we're also a huge proponent of DAX and DAOs. Um, and uh, yeah, we launched the first one on EOS. It's called the Crown Token um, with a K. So it's, uh, if you, yeah, pop in Telegram and um, I'll, you know, someone there will tip you some Crown Tokens. We have an amazing Telegram bot that uh, allows us to tip for uh, people that add value in our community. It's a gift giving token. We just give gifts to each other. And it's, it's, it's a really good entry point into, uh, into crypto. Um, so yeah, that's the simplest way. Pop into Crown Token, K R O um, W N Token, and uh, yeah, say what's up and say you saw you saw me on uh, Mad Bitcoins, and um, yeah, that's that's another project. So yeah, with Crown, it's a DAC, and the only way to um, distribute the token is through um, a consensus mechanism. So the interface that we use was made by EOS DAC. Um, that was a uh, probably the biggest proponent of DACs and DAOs. And um, they had a, they had, a, I would say, not a problem, but uh, it was, it was, Dax and DAOs are for like nerds, right? 
not for the general public. So when you try to explain to them, like you should, your company should be a DAC, your company should be a DAO. They're like, what are you talking about? Like our company works fine. Um, and then, uh, so that's where Alien Worlds comes from. They, they uh, put the, the horse in front of the cart, so to speak, and created a game to slowly educate people about what DACs and DAOs are. So each of these planets in this game are actually DAOs. And the people who mine the token can vote for the custodians and these custodians can manage those funds of those planets. And uh, this token is called Trillium and it happens to be on Binance. Anyway, real exciting and side, side tangent. So we're, we're heavily involved with, uh, with supporting alien worlds and other uh, ways to integrate. And we, we wanna make tools that support alien worlds, but also support other NFTs so yeah, with CSX we're doing and Crown, uh, we're doing a lot of fun projects. Um, yeah, we have a mining group on Alien Worlds called Kinder Miners, and we want to be the kindest um, supporters. So if you mine on our land, um, we give most of that back to the community in some ways because we want to get elected. We want to uh, we want to run some of these planets, and um, yeah, it's just so cool to see 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 things being um, just moving so quickly and. Um, Oh man, yeah, real exciting stuff. So pop into to kinder miners or crown and uh, and say what's up and yeah. Well, this is always the stuff we talked about back when we were starting curio cards and before there were NFTs. It's just how fun it would be to have all these games with all the interoperable tokens and you could mine them or you could collect them and trade them on the wax on atomic uh, assets or you could use them in the game and it's just all the different options. And then if you did win one of those planets you'd get to administer a, a real fund of real money and do real things in the world. I don't know what you do, hold up a sign and get on TV, whatever helps your planet, right? Um, so it's exciting stuff, uh, it's futuristic stuff. I don't think normal people could understand it, uh, but that's why it's so fun to talk about. So I hope you'll come back here and uh, talk to us about NFTs again soon, Max. Oh man, I can't wait. Yeah, I'm super excited to come back. And um, yeah, I really I really feel like we're we're creating a future. And I, And I knew this over, you know, when Bitcoin started, like we we all felt the same thing. We're like, oh man, this is gonna be huge. We didn't know how crazy it was gonna get, but we're it's 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 gonna get crazier and stranger. And I'm sure, you know, at some point everyone's gonna want to use this stuff. So make your own NFTs and give them out to your community. There you go. A good message to end on. All right. Thanks so much, Max, for being on the show. Until next time, bye bye. This episode was sponsored by NFT Ventures Miami. Become an NFTV artist. Sign up today. Easy bit. Easy bit. Easy bit. Bitcoin ATMs. Easy bit.